The first thing to do, I'll give you an example. Uh, we were just talking about this before we went live. You know, last year I did my first launch online ever. And so it was my first like, quote unquote, product launch where I did an official launch. And when I launched that, you know, it was my first one ever, but I said, we're going to do seven figures on this launch. And it was setting a big goal. And for most people would look at it and say, well, that's aggressive for your first launch. And yes, it was aggressive for the first launch. But the first thing I did, step one, is I looked around at what the best were doing. So it's, you can come into a space as step one and look around your industry and you can look at either averages or you could look at what would be good or you could look at what the best are doing and set, set a great goal for yourself and set a goal that's a little scary for yourself and set a goal that challenges you. So number one is look around at what the best are doing right? Because you can learn a lot from the best. That's in step one. Step two is then you set a big goal that's going to challenge uh, normal standards and even it's going to challenge great standards. And so those two are super, super important to get started with actually setting the goal. And when you do that, something happens. When I did it, I was like, we were just, and it, it wasn't like, a uh, million dollars uh, or seven figures was going to be our, our goal and we're going to try to get it. It was like setting it like it's done. And, and that's the important thing, the distinction of we're going to try and hit a million or no, I'm setting this as if it's done and I'm going to do whatever's necessary within my ethics and within standards and of course, you know, rules to make sure that this thing happens. And, and it's knowing when you set that big goal at step one, or step two, you set the big goal by looking at the, the industry leaders in step one of who are the best, right? Use that as your benchmark. Step two, setting that big goal that you're scared about, but you're setting it as if it's done. And, you know, you can look at this as a, as a thing of like, oh, is this a spiritual thing or whatever? However you look at it, you look at it. But here's the rational, practical aspect of it. When you get into going after that big goal, expect doubts, expect uncertainties, expect times where the roller coaster is down and it's, and it's sticking to that, 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 uh, that goal of that decision of it's done. And no matter what you find a way. So when you have, look at the best in step one of the best in the industry in step one, and then step two, you set that, that big challenging goal that's going to excite you. That's already done. Step three is as you find the resources to get it done. And you, the, here's the thing, you don't have these resources right now. Most people don't have the resources. When you set a goal to say, you know, we were going to do a million dollar launch, we didn't have all the resources, right? We had to then, once we set it and committed to it as if it was done, we had to act like it was done. So in step three, we had to find the resources, meaning, okay, we're going to find everything we need to know about uh, this particular area that we don't know right now. So that's part of finding the resources. Like, what is it that I don't know that I need to know? Um, who is it that I know that's done it that I need to know? Right? So what is it that I don't know that I need to know? And who is it that's done it that I need to know and connect with? And by figuring out those couple things right there, I mean, what I did is I got on the phone and interviewed all my friends who did million dollar launches because I wanted to know what I didn't know. I also connected with the people that I needed to know that had already the answers to it. And there's an element of this that I think sometimes, you know, in step three of finding the resources, then moves you to step four that is there's an element of textbook that you need to follow to accomplish something. And what I mean by that is a lot of times as an entrepreneur, and I know I'm guilty of it, you can be a doer and you can be a very action and a bias towards action. I have a bias towards action, but I can tell you one thing. Just being a, an, an activator in things isn't enough. In step four, you got to know the textbook way to, to execute this particular thing. And you got to learn as much as you need about the textbook way of doing it. And it's, it's important. Like with the launch, what's the formula? I hired a consultant who knew the structure because I didn't know. I'd never done one before. And this was all after I had looked at the best. I had set my, my huge goals. I found out what I needed to know, what I didn't know. And then it was looking at, okay, what's the textbook way to do this thing? And then creating a structure of a textbook way to do it. And then once you have the textbook structure in place, then you can allow your genius to come through and be creative on things like this, right? So that's a really important um, thing that people sometimes overlook is the textbook way. You could call it the method. 
of how it's done, the processes of how it's done. You could even call it the technology because that's what technology is. It's applying the methods and processes of something. So I think that's super critical, especially for people with a bias towards action who go, no, I could just go figure it out. Um, yes, to a certain degree, but that's a recipe for disaster. And it's also a recipe for non-replication in the future.